Do you want to know how to help an autistic child handle anxiety? That's what we're talking about in this video. I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting, good communication, good family relationships all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about my experiences teaching self-government to children who are autistic and have higher anxiety. <laughs> talking about autism and anxiety as well as what you can do to decrease anxiety in your autistic child. Autistic children have a different way of seeing the world. That's part of their beauty, right? But there can be some difficulties because of that. Sometimes communication can be very difficult. Sometimes they will stop listening to what you have to say because their anxiety level gets to be so high. This is a common problem with autistic children who also have higher levels of anxiety. When you are telling them why they can't do something or you're correcting them, they immediately want to tell you something and they don't want to wait. They want to tell you right now. In fact, an autistic child with higher levels of anxiety usually will stop listening to anything you have to say until they get their two cents in. If they don't get to share their perspective with you, they sometimes have a complete meltdown because the anxiety builds and builds as they are not feeling understood or they're not able to share what they have to say. In fact, a mother told me recently that her autistic daughter does this so much because she's pretty sure her daughter is worried that she will forget what she was going to say. If she waits and it gets to later, she won't remember what she wanted to say. She'll just remember she did want to say something and then that distresses her, which then increases her anxiety levels even more. So what in the world do we do in a circumstance like this? The teaching self-government parenting system is really geared toward helping a person do self-analysis. We're going to help people analyze their thoughts, analyze how they feel, analyze their actions, and try to make plans to get better results based on different thoughts or understanding their feelings in a different way, or deciding to have different actions. This is something that all people need, not just autistic people, but autistic people especially benefit by having that moment to deliberately analyze themselves, to wrap their brains around that, and decide how they are going to handle it before a circumstance arises. Now, this doesn't mean that they will perform perfectly how they wanted to in that circumstance, especially if the autistic person has higher levels of anxiety, but that pre-planning, pre-preparing for success is vital for helping an autistic person plan for better results in the future. So I highly recommend having conversations with your autistic child about the way they process, about the thoughts that they're having, so that you can talk with them about some of these things, like this mother talked about with her child, how her child is thinking that she does not remember if she has to wait to what she wanted to say, and then it bothers her that she can't remember what it was she wanted to say. Now here's the thing, lots of times when a person has something to say in the heat of the moment, it's coming from the amygdala, from the emotional part of the brain. And when the emotions let down, many people, whether they're autistic or not, have a hard time remembering what they were going to say. And that's because they're not in the emotional part of their brain anymore. But this particular child recognized that she does remember that she was going to say something and she can't remember what it is. And that then leads to anxiety afterward, which then for this child was leading to very long drawn out meltdowns that were super concerning for her and her family. So we had to come up with a way that she could be understood even in those moments when she shouldn't be interrupting and talking back due to the anxiety. Just because a person is autistic and they process differently does not mean that a parent should allow their autistic child to control conversations, control other people, or be dominant in any kind of way. An autistic child, like any other child, 
needs to recognize the role of their parents, needs to understand proper development and skills, and needs to be able to communicate calmly and with patience. I know that is a harder thing for an autistic child, but it is possible even though it could take time to really hit that bar that we're wanting to hit. Let's get into some of the nuts and bolts that are really gonna be beneficial to your autistic child who has increased levels of anxiety. But before we do, do you see how the things on this channel are going to benefit you? I hope so. I have created this channel for families just like yours. If you think you can gain more information from more videos on this channel related to this topic and others that will help you, then be sure to click the subscribe button now. Let's talk about what I suggested for this family family who had a daughter who was dealing with this type of anxiety. So this autistic child really felt like she needed to say something right at the time, otherwise it was going to be a struggle for her. So I first mentioned to the parents that this child needs to use her skill of disagreeing appropriately. The parents said, oh, that's right, we need to make sure she uses disagree appropriately. But then they said, you know, sometimes she gets so anxious, she'll start to lose track of her skills, she'll forget. So then I mentioned, okay, well then you can pre-teach her, you can remind her, if you see that she's going in that direction at all, then you can say, hey, just so you know, you can always disagree appropriately with us about something. And so you're going to have an opportunity to do that. So I'm gonna just say a couple more things and then you can disagree appropriately. So that's gonna help her hold off for just a second. And then you've gotta be as good as your word, right? Don't lecture, just be really short in the correction and then let that child disagree appropriately to you. And they said, okay, but sometimes she really truly can't even wait that long. She just feels like she has to say something right in the minute. So then I said, okay, well then you have a few choices. What you can do is you can decide ahead of time to give that child a cue phrase. Maybe the cue phrase is something like backwards or it, doesn't, it could be anything. It could be any phrase that they will remember or a word that they will remember. And so then when they say the word, they say backwards, they say ice cream, they say bubble gum, whatever it is, then you know that they have something to say. So they might just blurt out, ice cream and then say, okay, I know you want to say something that's super important. I'm going to finish this sentence and then we'll give you an opportunity to say something, but they don't have to start interjecting and arguing. That's option number one. Option number two is that they can teach the child how to have a hand signal. Maybe the child could raise their hand, meaning I, I've got something that I need to say. This would work just like a cue phrase as well. So as soon as they raised their hand, then the parent would say, aha, I can see that you wanna tell me something. I wanna know what that is. We're almost ready for that. And then finish your statement very quickly. If the child cannot do that, then what you might want to do, so then you have a two other options. You can try to guess what you think that the child wants to disagree about. So you might say something, if you see it's happening, they're starting starting to get anxious, then you can say, right now, I know that you are wanting to disagree with me about the dishes not being your dish night. And we're gonna talk about that, but I just need to finish this part first. So we'll come right back to that. So then you finish your part, you come right back to it. And that way they don't have to think about it anymore. They can listen to you and know you're gonna come right back to it. That's gonna help them decrease that anxiety. Finally, one thing that you can do if you're not really sure what they're being anxious about or what they're wanting to say, but you know it's starting to boil up, is you can say, okay, right now I can tell you, you wanna tell me something just in one or two words, what is it? about not my turn okay so I understand that you're wanting to tell me it's not your turn we're gonna have a conversation about that but you need to wait until I finish and then we'll have the conversation about how it's not your turn now they know you know you might even write it down you can even give them a notepad to write it down. I suggested to this family, another option is you give her a little notebook and a little pen. And when you're talking to her, she may stop looking for a minute and write down whatever the thought is that's in her head and then start looking at you. That's a whole other option. There are plenty of options. So you see, you can help the child be understood, decrease that anxiety, but still observe proper boundaries learn to wait and have patience, and then learn to use their skill like disagreeing appropriately.
appropriately at the appropriate time. As you do this multiple times, the child will get a feel for it, will get in kind of a rhythm. And so then they will start to learn more and more that they can wait and that it's okay. They'll even start telling themselves that it is okay to wait because they will have experienced it before in the past. We still have to teach autistic children what the ideal is. We can't dumb down the teaching for them just because they process differently. We have to help them see how to have that different processing and that we'll work with them with it, but they also still need to use the skills at the right time. Now there is another skill that we use. There's a correction skill as well as an intensive teaching skill. If the child gets incredibly anxious and they start going completely out of control, a family needs to have a skill in place to help that child. This is where the rule of three might come in or some other intensive teaching skills for smaller children. And you can learn a lot more about those things in my TSG parenting course. So if you would like to know more about these skills and principles of self-government, how to calm down an autistic child when they're starting to go out of control while maintaining your calmness at the same time, then I can help you there. In fact, I've been there with you. I know what it's like and what works. The TSG Parenting course on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com or the three-day parenting mastery training that is also something you can find information about on my website will help you get the training you need to learn all of the skills and principles of self-government and you'll get the support that you'll need too by asking me questions and other certified mentors so that you can implement the skills and principles in your family.